Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our preparatory ground instruction, uh, exercise 24, the last one on navigation aids. We're going to uh, briefly uh, talk about the VOR, the ADF, and the GPS. The uh, theory behind these is not really covered in uh, this PGI. It's covered in your ground school, so you can uh, take a look at it uh, there. And uh, if you're flying in cloud or let's say VFR over the top, you're going to need some sort of navigation aids to get you to your destination. So it's important to know how uh, these navigation aids work. Let's begin with the VHF Omni range, uh, also known as the VOR. The uh, VOR is a position sensitive uh, navigation aid that works in the uh, VHF frequency band just immediately above the FM radio band, so it starts at 108 megahertz and uh, goes up to, I think, uh, about 117.95 megahertz, something like that. And uh, the theory of it is covered in the ground school, so you can take a look at it there. But I'm just going to talk about the procedure, how to intercept a radial, so and and, and track a radial too. So when we talk about the VOR, what we're thinking of is really the VOR and a whole bunch of radials. So just think about a, let's just say a bicycle spoke for all intents and purposes. And I, I know bicycle spokes kind of cross each other and VOR radials don't, but just think of it that way anyway, this VOR, and then you have 360 radials uh, emanating from the VOR. And what the VOR does is it allows you to track one of those radials to or from the VOR. So the first thing you're going to do is tune and identify the appropriate frequency and Morse code. That Morse code is going to be found on your map or approach plate, whatever you are using. The next thing you will do is you will select the appropriate radial that you want to uh, be on or or track towards. So the acronym or the, the saying that we have is from top to bottom. So remember that there's a to from flag. And so if we want to go to the VOR, we put the radial on the bottom. And if we want to go from the VOR, we put the radial on the top. Uh, the third thing you're going to do with the, uh, when tracking or intercepting a, a radial is you're going to uh, turn to intercept uh, the radial on, on the appropriate heading. So you have to figure out, you have to know where you are uh, before you do this because you need to figure out, do I turn left, do I turn right? And then, and then of course, you know, if you're turned the wrong way and you think you have to turn right, well, you're never going to intercept that VR. So it's really important that you understand how the VR works, how it's position sensitive, and you understand where you are in relation to that VR. But hopefully, uh, it's it's a lot easier actually in the airplane than it is uh, to do it kind of on the ground uh, because you do you you should have some sort of situational awareness and know where you go. So anyway. Uh, what's going to happen, you're going to turn to this intercept heading as you approach the intercept or as you approach the radial, that course deviation indicator, the CDI, is going to uh, come into the center and then you're just going to fly that radial and correct for wind. And uh, that's pretty easy to do if, let's say, over some time you're showing, uh, you know, a, a dot off, let's say, so it's two degrees off. Well, turn just turn four degrees in until you are back on your radial and then and just crab in for two degrees. So let's watch a video now of intercepting a uh, VOR radial. Here we're going to intercept a VOR radial from the station. So the first thing we're going to do is tune and identify our VOR frequency on the VHF or on the VOR uh, receiver. Then we're going to turn the OBS knob until we have a from flag. So the from flag, sometimes it will say from, sometimes it will point down. And the radial that we want to be flying will be on the top when we set that. Sometimes on some aircraft we have a CDI selector. We're going to set that to navigation, to nav, so that the VOR head uh, tracks or is uh, set up to the VOR receiver and not the GPS. And then we're going to turn to the appropriate intercept heading. Here we can see that we're approaching the selected radial. The needle starts to move towards the center. And what we do is we turn towards the heading that would keep us on that VR radial, correcting 
for wind. Here we're going to intercept a VOR radial to the station. We're going to tune and identify the VOR, make sure that our nav aid is set to navigation, and we're going to turn the OBS knob until we have a two flag. It will either say two or there will be an up arrow, and we set the radial we want on the bottom, so from top to bottom, and then we fly and intercept uh, that radial Here we're intercepting the selected radial. We're going to turn our heading uh, towards the track that we want to fly and fly the radial, adjusting for wind, uh, keeping the course deviation indicator in the center. Secondly, uh, we have an automatic direction finder. These are getting really old. Uh, I don't remember the last time I actually used an ADF uh, flying in a jet. I don't even know. I can't even think back. Like we're talking like almost 20 years ago that it would have I would have used one. I don't even think I ever used one flying in, in an airliner. Um, th yeah, they're they're the the nice thing about them is they're super cheap to install. Like you can almost build your own. Uh, non-directional beacon at home. Uh, it's just an LF or MF uh, radio. You can actually you can actually tune into uh, AM radio stations, and you could actually fly to those antennas if you wanted to using this equipment. So the important thing to remember with the automatic direction finder, it's heading sensitive, not position sensitive. So as you change heading, the arrow uh, will point differently because the arrow always points towards the station, towards the NDB. There is a, a formula that you kind of have to memorize. So the bearing to the station is the relative bearing plus the magnetic heading. So if you want to figure out your bearing to station, the easiest way to do, if you don't want to do the math, is just think about or, or look at the, the ADF and, and see where the arrow is pointing and just think about moving that arrow onto your heading indicator because your heading indicator is indicating your magnetic heading. And then that will tell you your bearing to station. So the the easiest way to think about it is in a nutshell you make the arrow point up and correct for wind that's kind of how i tell people to do it at first but there is kind of a more formal procedure so the way to do it you're going to tune and identify just like you did with the vor and then you turn towards your intercept heading so you know where you are you know what your bearing to station is then you know what uh, bearing you want to be on and so you, you're going to turn towards that bearing. And then once you reach that bearing, you're going to track that bearing. So if you look in the bottom right, uh, it, it gives, let's say, a relative bearing of uh, north, for example. This is just what it, it happens to say 
on a uh, the relative bearing of north, so it means it's going straight up, and the magnetic heading is 0, 3, 0. So you add the two together, 0, 3, 0 plus 0, 0, 0 is 0, 3, 0. So your bearing to the station is uh, 0, 3, 0. Then as you're flying sometime down, you all of a sudden notice you're still flying a heading of 0, 3, 0. So I'll just uh, point this out here. Just now we're talking about this right here, okay, so we're flying right here, okay, so we're still flying 0, 3, 0, but you notice the, the relative bearing is 0, 1, 0 right here, right, okay, so that means we've been blown off by the wind, so what is the bearing to station at this time, so remember add the two together, so it's going to be the bearing to station is 0, 4, 0, so we're off, we're 10 degrees off course now, so we turn uh, towards back on course, so here now we're at 0, 050 0 is a magnetic heading, and so remember the relative bearing is 350 or minus 10 degrees. So again, we're, we, we're still on the same bearing to station. 0, 050 0 plus 350 or minus 10 would be uh, 0, uh, 4, 0. So we're still off. But then as we fly that heading and we get back on course right here, we're still flying 0, 050. 0. Now the relative bearing is minus 20. So our bearing to station zero three zero. So now we know that we're on the bearing to the station that we want. And then we can take out half of our crab, just like we always do for VFR or anything else. So now we're going zero four zero relative bearing 10 degrees. So we're crabbing into the wind 10 degrees and we're hopefully going to stay on uh, that bearing to station. The wind correction angle there is uh, 10 degrees. So let's watch a video now how this uh, looks like in real life. And, uh, and we'll walk your way through it. This is the simplest way to use an ADF. Tune and identify the ADF frequency and turn until the ADF arrow, the ADF needle points straight up and keep that going straight up. Of course, if you have a crosswind, what this could result in is you ending up doing a teardrop pattern. So if you end up with a crosswind, and you end up off track, you're going to want to turn into the wind and fly maybe, let's say, a crab of five degrees. So your needle, your heading will be about five degrees to the right of the uh, bearing you want to fly, and the needle will be five degrees to the left. Lastly, uh, let's talk about the global positioning system. This is obviously ubiquitous. Almost every airplane has them. Uh, this is almost the only navigation system that we use other than an ILS kind of in the uh, in jet aircraft. And uh, these are just kind of some different pictures of kind of original GPSs and kind of how they progressed. If we look here, this is kind of an original uh, handheld uh, GPS. And then this is kind of near the beginning of my flying career. This was the, the GPS that was popular. Uh, that was, was made by North Star Aviation and not much of a screen there. And then you had the KLN-90B. That was also very popular. That was actually probably the most popular GPS for a long time. It's the first approach certified uh, GPS that, I, that I'm familiar with anyway. And you have the Garmin uh, 430 right here. Uh, the Garmin 430, uh, I remember when I came out, uh, about 20 years ago, it was just kind of the most amazing GPS. Everyone had to have it. And interestingly enough, it's still popular. So 20 years later, you can still buy these brand new and, and people are still putting them in their airplane. And then now you have uh, these fancy GPSs that are essentially on tablets here on the right side. Uh, and they have all sorts of fancy synthetic vision and everything. It's really amazing uh, what's available now. But basically, uh, when you're using a GPS, yeah, you, all these GPSs, they have direct two functions. Uh, it's usually a D with an arrow through it. 
So this one, it's right here, like right there. That's a D with an arrow through it here. D with an arrow through it. Um, the older ones don't. Uh, I don't know what they have. I have no idea how, how you would use it. Um, but you're just going to uh, select the direct two and then use the knobs, in this case right here, would be the knob that you would use to select the airport or, or whatever you want. And then you're going to hit enter and then you're going to have a course deviation indicator come up and you're just going to keep that course deviation indicator in the middle so it's pretty simple all these gps's have like really really complex functions uh, especially like the garmin 430 uh, on the bottom left here that's one I'm, I'm most familiar with and so it's important that when you go flying with an aircraft with a new gps you just familiarize yourself with all the features in that gps uh, looking at the owner's manual and then you can also download some you can usually download some uh, manuals, owner's manuals, and, and do a lot more things uh, like how to do flight plans so that instead of just going direct to everywhere, you might go from point to point and it just automatically sequences along your flight plan. So that uh, let's take a look at how to use the GPS. I'm going to show you a video here of, uh, of, direct, of uh, using the direct to function and then uh, tracking somewhere with the GPS. We're going to use the direct to function on this GPS. We're going to hit the direct to button and use the knobs to select the station that we want to fly to. Once we've selected it, we press enter. Make sure that we have our uh, CDI set to GPS mode. So push that button if your aircraft has that to GPS. And then you're going to fly an intercept heading and keep that CDI in the center. Let's talk about the flight test standards. Hopefully, if you're a private pilot a student, your instructor is exposing you to some navigation aids uh, because you do need to have five hours of instrument time. So you might as well cover some of this. And it is uh, good to know. And uh, you will be expect, but it's only expected on the commercial flight test that you're actually tested on it. So you're, you're expected to tune and identify a station and uh, apply some sort of method to determine the airplane's position. Uh, relative to the GPS waypoint, VOR, or NDB. So uh, you're going to be, uh, I mean, that's pretty pretty simple to do once you understand these uh, radials. Then you're going to intercept something and maintain a specified track uh, and heading and altitude. So it, uh, it should be a pretty easy for your commercial flight test uh, to figure that out. Anyway, that concludes this lesson on instrument flying navigation aids. Thanks for joining me. And uh, we'll see you in the next lesson.